Hey, welcome everyone. We're doing another edition of uh, Impressions of Armillo. Uh, today we have Nels Anderson with us of uh, Campo Santo. He's the main designer there. You guys probably know him um, probably best from Mark of the Ninja for Clay Entertainment. Uh, his background is comp sci, he's done gameplay programming, and he's from U.S. Wyoming, and he's now living with us up in Canada. I'd had Nels play a little bit of Armillo. What I want to do is just get some impressions from him on the game. So I'm going to ask him a couple of questions, and he'll tell us about Armillo. The first question, Nels, is um, could you describe your favorite audio moment or audio element in Armillo, and maybe tell us a bit of the why? I was thinking about this earlier. Probably my favorite thing is... Uh, this is kind of broad, I guess, but the soundscape for, like, the general sound effects, like, for example, the most notable thing is, like, the little blue energy sphere things. Like, when you pick them up, there's a sound effect, but that sound effect fits in with the music, so it almost feels like when you're, and I mean, the game is very kinetic, so you move very quickly anyway, right? But you hit a bunch of those things in sequence, and it's almost like generative music, so it has like a, a little tiny bit of a, of a rhythm game feel, which is really cool. That's cool that you noted that. Uh, the orbs, I guess I'll talk a little bit about it too. Orbs, yeah. yeah. The orbs were something that was going to be one of the most rewarding aspects of the collection, because collection can get tedious. So we wanted to make it very rewarding. So in my experience, things that are music-based, if you've got music in the background and you want rewards, you really tie in that into your huh. song. So. So the orbs were, uh, they're in every single key, so whenever you, ch you change level, the song changes in a different key, and the orbs actually are in tune, and they arpeggiate within that key. Yeah, you're playing a little bit of an instrument. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and there's a lot of synthesizer stuff that we ended up doing to make those happen, and, uh, but I, I kind of treated them like a lead voice in a, in a, in a music mix, so that yeah. they, they sort of fit in with the music, and sometimes you don't really notice, but... But they really are kind of part of the music, even though they're they're not. I mean, of course, you want to have some kind of like audio feedback for picking those things up. But the fact that it could actually like become an almost like performative part of the experience mm -hmm. was awesome. I liked it a lot. That, that was probably that was that was my favorite like audio-wise part of the game. Question question number two for Nels, which he picked, um, so he better do a good job of answering this. <laughs> is uh, what did you find interesting about the level design? So the thing that I thought was kind of interesting is. The game ended up having a feel that was both different from like normal side-scrolling 2D platformers, something like Mark the Ninja or Mario or whatever, um, but also like 3D platformers like Mario Galaxy or uh, Ratchet and Clank. I guess that's a new platformer or anything like that. Um, it wasn't like either of those things really because the space. It was more about like speed and precision and control. It was almost like platformer pinball. Just the amount of space you can see when you're going super fast in a side scroller is really not very much. So it's just like you, you like your reactions have to be instantaneous and it doesn't feel like you're really you know, very confident moving around the world. You're just kind of like blazing forward and trying not to smash into anything. But with Armillo, the fact that it was presented in kind of this top down rolling perspective and you could kind of because you could see what was like in the level that wasn't in your immediate like rail, gully, path, whatever. Um, you could go really fast, but it also felt like you still had a lot of control, and it kind of yeah, made a thing feel like speedy and kinetic without it feeling like uncontrolled or you're just sort of like, you know, bouncing around trying not to get smashed. I think one of the things that is a, a really interesting happy accident about our Armillo, and I say that because I'm not the main designer, so yeah. you know, James might turn around and go, what do you mean, this was totally intentional. It started being a 2D game, then we mapped it onto 3D. Now, the thing with 3D is it's very difficult to spatialize platforming in 3D, and if you've played Mario Galaxy, you know exactly what I mean with the cameras yeah. and some of the positioning. Now, what we started with was rails. We had rails in 2D, we kept the rails in 3D. So hmm. what you're effectively doing is you're presenting a 3D world, but it's mostly 2D platforming until we open up those rails. So if you, yeah. if you crunch in that concept is you're moving in 3D, but really only in two directions. Right. And sometimes just one, like forward or backward. Yeah. So we've removed that sort of oddness of the 3D camera moving around and just all that stuff and we kind of simplified it into 2D but it's still 3D and I think that makes it a lot easier for me it's I find it much easier I'm not a hardcore gamer I'm a casual gamer I'm a Mario guy so 
when you give me 3D stuff, usually I get a bit confused. I think right. what it does really well in some cases is it restricts that third dimension and gives you a bit of ease while still presenting you with a 3D um, 3D space. So yeah, yeah, exactly. And that yeah, it was able to kind of embrace its constraints well while still being able to leverage the stuff that it was good at or wanted to. I like that forward. 2D sort of constraint. I think constraints in design are really good because yeah, yeah for it, sure. If you let go of that constraint, then it's not our Milo anymore. It's it's, it's something else. So uh, big thanks to Nels Anderson for sitting down with us and talking about our Milo and playing our Milo. And yeah. Nels, do you have any last things you want to say to the viewers? Uh, I hope everyone checks out our Milo and enjoys it because it is definitely like a unique, different thing. And I think it's it's really cool and worth checking out.